I greet you all in the name of Christ and welcome you to this service of evening prayer and experience of Visio Divina. If you have the printed materials that I have sent out, I invite you to join me now in the opening sentences. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. In the city of God, night shall be no more. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. I invite you to pray with me. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thanks and praise to you, O God, for the gift of your glorious light, shining at the dawn of creation, guiding us through the wilderness, leading us to the land of promise. You sent Jesus, light of the world, to be our way of truth and life. Help us to follow him each day and rest in him each night until at last we may come to dwell in your realm of endless light. Through Christ our Lord and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, O God, now and forever. Amen. Let my prayer eyes up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. O oh God, I call to you. I welcome you to pray with me now. O oh, gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, 
wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading for this evening comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. I will read through it two times. The first time, I invite you to listen for words or phrases or to realize connections that this passage of Scripture makes with other passages in the Bible. And then as I read it a second time, you'll be invited to focus on the illumination. So hear now this reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of humanity, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Let us pause now to reflect on the reading in silence. Amen. As I read through a second time, I invite you to contemplate the illumination which will appear on the screen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, 
he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of humanity, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. As you continue to contemplate the illumination now, I invite you to listen as I offer this guided reflection. This illumination shines at the heart of the Christmas Eve service. As I walk to the center of the congregation to read John 1, the final reading in the lessons and carols, as I read the words, the Christ candle in the Advent wreath is lit, we respond by singing joy to the world. The opening words of John 1 remind us immediately of the opening of Genesis. Although the Gospels of Matthew and Luke present us with the stories of the birth of Jesus we know and love, John also presents a birth narrative. Rather than the intimacy of Luke and Matthew, John makes the birth of Jesus cosmic. He presents Christ as the new creation and describes what theologians call the pre-existence of Christ. Thus, John roots his cosmic depiction of the incarnation in the wisdom tradition of Judaism and reinforces the Trinitarian nature of our faith. Throughout his gospel, John demonstrates that the Incarnation has implications not only for human existence, but for all of creation. God so loved the world, Jesus says in John 3. World there is cosmos in Greek. The Gospel of John applies Christ's redemption to the whole cosmos. The cosmic nature of the Christ incarnation is evident in the background. In the center of the top of the illumination, we see an artistic rendering of a dying star based on a photograph from the Hubble telescope. It can be read as an allusion to the Big Bang theory, which explains scientifically the birth of the universe. Coming from the swirl of cosmic matter is a figure gradually taking shape as a human being. From the verse written about his shoulders, we know the figure is Christ. The highly decorative script on the left, appearing almost as ancient musical notation, render the Apostle Paul's words in his hymn from Colossians 1 which sings of the cosmic importance of Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. The passage connects the theology of reconciliation through the crucifixion and resurrection to the creation of all that is, as well as with the way all things will end with the new creation, recreation in the Alpha and the Omega. To the left of the gold script is a keyhole. This recalls the tradition of locked and hinged manuscripts securing, protecting, and holding the key to the Word of God. Perhaps it makes you think of something Jesus said about standing before the door and knocking, or perhaps of locked diaries and secret prayers of the heart. How much does God love us and the world? This one passage at the beginning of John's Gospel 
And this luminescent illumination suggests God loves us more than anyone can ever hope to express in words alone. Let us now reflect on the illumination in silence. Amen. As we go to God together in prayer now, some of those we'll want to remember include Linda and Bruce. Uh, we'll want to remember Ruth and Jack. We will remember Anne as she continues to recover from surgery. We'll want to remember schools, um, administrators, teachers, and staff as they contemplate decisions about the fall and also students and parents as they contemplate these decisions as well. We remember the many unemployed, those uninsured, and we continue to pray for and remember frontline medical workers. So mindful of all of these and perhaps other concerns, let us go now to God together in prayer. Let my prayer rise before you as incense the lifting of my hands as an evening sacrifice. We lift our voices in prayer and praise, holy God, for you have lifted us to new life in Jesus Christ, and your blessings come in generous measure. Especially we thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ for all, we thank you for the wonder and beauty of creation, for the green of summer, the blooming flowers, and the produce of gardens. We thank you for the love of family and friends. We thank you for opportunities for faithful service. We thank you for particular blessings we have enjoyed this day. We hold up before you human needs, God of compassion, for you have come to us in Jesus Christ and shared our life so that we may share his resurrection. Especially we pray for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We pray for peace and justice in the world, especially in our own nation. We pray for the unemployed, the uninsured, and those forced to work in unsafe conditions. We pray for those who are afraid, isolated, lonely, and despairing. We pray for those who offer the compassion of Christ. We pray for teachers, administrators, students, and parents. We pray for frontline medical workers in clinics, hospitals, and research labs. We pray for Bruce and Linda, Ruth and Jack, Anne and new church officers. As you have made this day, O oh God, you also make the night. Give light for our comfort. Come upon us with quietness and still our souls, that we may listen for the whisper of your Spirit and be attentive to your nearness in our dreams. Empower us to rise again in new life, to proclaim your praise, and show Christ to the world, for he reigns forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> And now in the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord, who is our peace, give us peace at all times and in every way. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. May God grant us all a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen.